Well, I really love modern design, but there's something special about period architecture. I think it evokes a real sense of nostalgia and house and home. Well, today on the show, we're going to see the construction of a traditional Queenslander, but with a twist. The builder is going to use modern materials. Let's see if he can pull it off and still lose none of the old world charm. We meet second generation builder Simon Griggs as he attempts to execute a classic Queenslander style house. His clients are Steve and Sarah, who've recently relocated from the UK and they're hoping to build their own Australian dream. Join us on the journey from dirt to detailing. This is Before and After. Townsville is often referred to as the unofficial capital of North Queensland, established for its access to the sea, first for industry, then for military, and now also for tourism as a gateway to the Great Barrier Reef. And with over 300 sunny days a year, it's easy to see why people love living here. Steve and Sarah made the move in 2011 from the UK. A job opportunity for Sarah made the prospect extremely sunny and too hard to pass up. Steve took on the role of stay-at-home dad for their twin boys aged 10 and it was up to him to find the perfect site for their dream home. I rode around on my mountain bike looking for various plots and came across this one up on the hillside and they wanted a quick closure on it and we were available and were Just able to. right in a position to go for it so yeah. we were so fortunate to be able to find it and snap it up quickly. We closed in a week and it that was, was ours. It. Well, 1,400 square metres of mountain, really, <laughs> and, I mean, and dirt and rocks. <laughs> there's a flatter bit at the front, so this is the very steep bit. This is going to be the challenge with the garden, but we're hoping to put the house down towards the front of the block. Looking at uh, Garth Chapman. As a designer. As a designer and um, building with Tribute Homes, who, who are their local builder here. We looked at their show home and were impressed that in the middle of summer they weren't running air conditioning, so yeah, they were very cool. Um, and they seem like a genuine, easy to work with guy, so. I started in the building industry um, from when I was about the age of eight or nine. My father was a uh, builder from uh, when he left school and that me being the only son in his family, um, I kind of like dragged onto the building sites from a young age, way before that workplace health safety to come in. And as a result of that, I just kind of got that passion for the building. I uh, joined the army, did 20 years in the army, and through no choice of my own, I just got, always got that drive in you. I think it's in your blood. Once you're born with it, you're born with it. And uh, I got back into the building industry. When a client come to us with a specific design in mind, and that was um, the, a Queenslander style of home. The best Queenslander that I ever built was a uh, Garth Chapman Queenslander, which originated in the Sunshine Coast. Queenslander houses are primarily made of timber. They are single or double storey homes and are built on stumps, allowing the house to float above the terrain. They have large verandas often wrapping around most of the house. And the reason for these features? It's the climate. Queensland is very hot and a Queenslander deals with the heat better than most traditional styles. Able to catch the breeze from any direction and with maximum shade provided, everything is created to give refuge from the heat. The raising up of stumps also helps with protection from termite attack and other pests as well. It also allows water to pass underneath in the event of a flood. The popularity of building Queenslanders these days has faded, with smaller blocks and the need for cheaper construction. These classic homes are a sign of the past. But this traditional feel is exactly what Steve and Sarah are looking for. And with Townsville's hot weather, it makes perfect sense. A traditional timber house with lots of openings, doors and windows to make the use of the prevailing breeze really. And, you know, hopefully we're not going to be needing to use our air conditioning all the time because we've got this wonderful breeze up here and we want to make the most of it. So we like the fretwork, the, the sort of traditional pretty designs that you see on the older houses. So on the end, outside it'll be traditional, it'll be detailed, very detailed, um, and on the inside more, more sort of plain and, 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 and modern. I just want to make the most of the view, so we need to design the living upstairs, I think, and hopefully have a nice big rotunda or a deck or somewhere to sit out and have breakfast on a Saturday morning. And 
I mean, maybe think about the living space at the front so that we can make the most of the views. Well, when we come to the site, the client wanted it on the, the level section of the block. Um, the block, you could say, is in two parts. The front part is all level and the back part has got a, a slope of around about a bit over 22 degrees. The client wanted us to um, bring the house forward slightly so they could keep it on the level and uh, we excavated slightly into the cut behind us or the slope behind us. That um, hence created a retainer wall which we designed uh, out of link blocks. It's To me, I'm not the sort of person that um, is satisfied with um, a level block well, with just doing a simple masonry block home. I like something that's going to create a challenge and, and if you're never challenged in life, you're never going to learn and get more experience. Um, so I always like to do difficult jobs where I, it always takes me out of my comfort zone and it can and push me and I can learn more and more. After the break, we find out how Simon is approaching this classic build with modern materials. And later, we reveal the finished house in all its glory. We're in Townsville to watch the build of a classic Queenslander. Steve and Sarah have found an amazing site high up on the hill to capture the coastal views. We catch up with builder Simon from Tribute Homes to see how things are taking shape. G'day Simon, nice to meet you yeah, mate. You absolutely love your town, beautiful Townsville. God's country. It is absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's hot here in the middle of winter. So what stage are we at here? We're um, just at the finish off the main frame. The truss is going up. I'm just looking around at the estate here. We've got a lot of houses that are built out of block, and obviously that's for the cyclone proofing. You're building out of sticks. How's that going to cope? Yeah, well, they're a bit more than sticks. <laughs> OK. <laughs> it's actually a plantation pine, so it's um, produced and grown just for um, house building of um, frames. OK. Up yeah. here is a lot more bracing. And we also use um, a heavier tie-down rod as it's a threaded rod okay. that goes from the just beside the truss all the way down to the okay. footings. So as cyclone hits a roof, yep. just like an aeroplane wing, yep. as it uh, the wind speeds up on that, it, it creates uplift and pulls the aeroplane up in the air. Okay. Same with the roof. If it, the cyclone or the winds or the cyclone hit that roof, yep. it's creating direct uplift on, yeah. a, on a 90 degree angle and it's pulling that roof up. So how do you tie it into the ground to stop it from just the, flying the, off? Those rods are all the way down okay. to the footings. Yeah, great. Yeah, okay, great. Right down in, in the ground and uh, at least a foot. Now, the old girl's going to look absolutely beautiful when she's finished. Um, there's so much timber going on to this home. Um, and that's what gives us its character, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, we try to do the most cost-effective traditional Queensland you can. Okay. Well, we've been building Queenslanders quite some time because they're designed to be a home. Yeah. You know, not a like World War II bunker. So, yeah. And it's, it's they're cool, yep. and they're built for the um, tropics of Townsville and, and North Queensland. Uh, but to build it out of all hardwood, the frame and everything, and with um, VJ tongue and groove um, walls and stuff like that, it um, blows the cost way out of proportion. So this, this product is our Prime Line Heritage, which is a reinforced fibre cement board. The thing we've overcome with our fibre cement products is the, the fact that you don't have to maintain them like you did with the old timber weatherboard products of, of yesteryear that we used on, on Queenslanders in times gone by. The Heritage is a, is a product that's emulating you know, weatherboards that we used in the past with Queenslanders. Um, we do have a new range of, of products too that, that do give that, deliver that modern look and they're under our Skyon range of products. What gives me the most satisfaction, I think building is a creative process and just seeing things come to life. I mean, it's creative from the architect and designer and I think the builders and the people that work from James Hardy get excited about seeing houses come to life, especially if they're innovative, especially if they're a bit different. Simon was saying that the relationship with Tribute Homes goes back a long way. Mm. His father worked with James Hardy many, many years ago, so I think this is the second generation of the relationship. It's great working with Simon because he's, he's passionate about what he does and enables us to be creative in what we do and, and try and assist him to grow his business. It's now July, the main frame's completed, the veranda frame's finished, the roof's going on. Once the cladding's completed, you start to see the little um, finishes um, and this minor detail that really makes it look like a true traditional Queenslander. What I always like to see as the house has been developed is one big milestone is the deck actually goes down. We use a, um, a Jarrah sealed 
uh, short edge decking. It's called short edge because it's got the sharp edges from the mill. They've been uh, dressed and uh, pencil round on them. So when you see that jarra go down, you can actually see a, the Queensland developing that typical veranda. And it, it, at the start, it looks like a, a ballroom finish uh, without the polish. Well, two days ago we finished the external cladding and uh, all the window trims and the door trims and we've got uh, the painter started on the outside. Uh, we're finishing off the handrails to the veranda on the front and we also uh, got the cladding started on, uh, sorry, the bowl plaster or USG bowl plasterboard on the inside of the house is going um, on the walls and tomorrow they'll start uh, setting with uh, the plasterboard. Simon and I have been probably working for about five, five to six years. I supply uh, all of Simon's homes. Very distinctive builder. They're, they're, as, as I said, there aren't too many guys in towns that have built anything like Simon does. Most of it's your rendered block and he's purely timber framed home. Benefits of using plasterboard, it's, it's, a, it's an economical way to, to line your walls. You probably find not 85 to 90 percent of walls in most homes aligned with plasterboard. USG plasterboard, probably the biggest supplier in Queensland. Uh, we supply all Simon's homes. Particularly good on Simon's type of homes, they're timber framed homes, very good. Um, acoustically very good and um, uh, great thermal values also. The USG borrow product, in my opinion, is second to none. The Queensland style is a type of house that you can make a connection with it. It's also a style that has a wow factor when finished. Uh, you see it on a plan, it looks impressive but you truly don't understand how impressive it looks until it's finished with all the painting on and, and the final finishings. When you um, actually drive past and walk past this house, you'll actually stop and look and admire it, where most other houses that are built in towns will normally have um, uh, similar to each other, the next door neighbours. Well, the good news story is that uh, we've been here every day no hiccups, no delays, no difficulties at all. No problems at this stage, and I don't foresee any coming. However, a perfect plan never goes right. Well, after the break, we finally reveal the finished house. We catch up with the owners and find out what they think of their new home. Well, the day is finally here. It's now late October and Steve and Sarah have been in the house for three weeks. The old girl's looking pretty amazing. Absolutely love the finished product. Looks really great. What are you, what are you thinking? Are you happy? Yeah, we're absolutely ecstatic. Been about three weeks now and starting to feel like home. Yeah, we've come a little bit premature because the um, the garden is not done other than the one little patch. Yeah, well, we're working on it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you come a bit early. So we, we have come a bit early. But, I mean, so have you got plans for the garden? Yeah, I've, I'm going to do a landscaping, but it's uh, over a period of time. We've been watching the process the whole way through. Can't wait to get inside and see how it's turned out. Can we have a look? Absolutely, yeah. come on. Right, let's do it. What drew you to the Queenslander idea in the first place? Well, I thought if we were going to live in this hot environment, I mean, it's it very, hot, very here. hot here in, <laughs> in the summer, we just wanted to live in what was um, you know, people have been living in for a hundred years, which is, you know, Queenslanders, so yeah. why, why go against that and try and build? They and work. It, um, it's a traditional design, it looks good. You know, we're living in a beautiful part of the world, so we wanted a beautiful house that suits the environment. Yeah, yeah. So this room's really cool. It's always cool because we've got the veranda that keeps it shaded and then the breezes, we can have all the doors and windows open and it's stunning. 
Steve and Sarah chose your um, vinyl planking. It's glued to their floor. Well, a rear timber floor um, t is, takes a lot more wear than a, than a vinyl floor. And, you know, like if you get a stone or something sharp, you actually gouge the timber and you need to then, you know, pull it back and re-sand it and polish it. Where, yeah, your vinyl floor, it takes a lot more punishment. It's a dark colour, but because their home is so open and airy and, and um, yeah, it's got the beautiful views and everything, it, it just looks, it looks fabulous. It just gives you that real natural, traditional Queenslander feel, I suppose, that, that um, Steve and Sarah were going with their home. This is a really great idea with the, um, the splashback. That's a massive panoramic window. I mean, we came out to the block and we put some pallets up and then we tried to envisage what our view would be and the idea was we looked out over the top and not onto these the other properties. The tiles um, in the kitchen, they're like a subway tile but they're beveled, really, really stunning. I've never seen them before. Where, where'd you get those from? Uh, they came from Beaumont Tiles, that was one of your things I wanted you really tiles? wanted. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah. they're quite traditional England. Um, uh, really but the beveled edges work well, I think. Steve and Sarah came in. I used Scan and Play to show them how it would look in the room after we finished doing the job. What it allows you to do is visualise what that room will look like with that wall tile and that floor tile, how harmoniously it can work together. In a kitchen splashback, it can give you that ability to foresee what something will look like before you go and put it in, which makes happier experience for the customer. Steve and Sarah have uh, chosen a nice 300 by 600 wall tile in a travertine lookalike for the wall. And then on the floor, they're using a really nice uh, lava chocolate. In the kitchen, they've used a beautiful modern beveled edge white subway tile with a nice white grout that keeps it nice and clean and modern. With using Scan and Play, take out a lot of guesswork. We can also print it out so that they can take it with them and they can have a visualisation and they can really show it to their tiler as well so that the, he knows what they're trying to achieve. Now, there's a, the interesting um, colours going on with the, um, with the windows and the bathrooms. It was my nod to the, to the traditional of uh, uh, Queensland as well. They had coloured glass in the yeah. windows. OK, well, the rotunda, can we come and have a look at that? Yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's go. go. After the break, we continue our tour of this beautiful Queenslander and we take a walk out onto the rotunda and see those endless views. Steve and Sarah came to Simon with high hopes of building a traditional style Queenslander on their block, high on the hill overlooking Townsville. It was the character of a classic old home they were looking for, also the benefits of dealing with a hot climate in North Queensland. Simon took on the challenge and what he delivered is a home with quality and character. We've done quite a few Queenslanders um, now and um, they always end up with a rewarding um, result and feeling about them. Um, it's quite good, it's, in fact, as they come to that final stages with the cleaning of it and um, the touch-ups and the painting and stuff like that, you, um, you start to fall in love with the house. Although it's different from others um, that we've done, uh, you, you always fall in love with them. Yeah. It's just it's got that home feeling about them, you know, I mean, you can really connect with them. Uh, they got that sort of feeling that you've um, been here a long time and, it's, you know, you can really relate to it. All in all, it's uh, an amazing job, amazing house. It's, it really is a home. It's a, it's a home, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. That's what we wanted. Yeah. So what would you say is your favourite part of the home? Um, this area, I think. This, is, this works really well, this veranda and uh, the kitchen area and this, obviously this view here. Here he is. G'day mate, how are you? Great to Good see you again. Sarah. Thanks Simon. So uh, you're back again. Um, what do you think? Are you, are you happy with your work? Oh yeah, very happy. Um, it always, at the end result, puts a smile on everyone's face and it's really rewarding. Well mate, you've come at just the right time. I'm just about to ask the hard question. 
about price. So what was the price and did it come in on budget? Yeah, we're, we're, we're around about where we thought we'd be. It's about uh, 7.30 at the moment where we've come in. And okay, so, so. that's great. We had to put in a, a, a bit for the retaining wall and, and bits like that and obviously we've, we've added extras as we've gone so that always puts the price up but it's yeah. it's been mm -hmm. really good. Well, it's Great to come back and see it and see it to finally finish. So thanks, mate, for um, allowing you. us to go on the journey. It's, good. it's a pleasure. And thanks so, yeah, so much, thank Steve. You. Thank you, Sarah. Nice I really appreciate thanks it. Thanks, Simon. And thank you, Simon. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Jeez. Simon. Fantastic. Well, I love this house. I love how the Queenslander design has evolved and been adapted to suit this climate. I also love how Simon has been able to execute this classic design with modern advancements using new materials and improved techniques. And for me, it's the beautiful little details that give it that distinctive character of a true Queenslander home. Well, it looks to me that the almighty Queenslander still has a place in modern living. <laughs>